OK. So, agenda status one ten one uh, <coughs> that has been done. What do we have? Demos. Who's got some demos here? I have oh, two demos. Um, anyone else? Just being me then, if you want to show something. Um, topics, I have these. Um, we'll see after status. This one is about is about um, HTML elements. Um, okay, status one ten one. What's up there? I did a fetch all correct. Um, so seven days ago, look at that all this activity crazy. Um, so this one. Fixing Postgres SQL when creating distributed logs table, uh, it might be related to the only issue that we are trying to fix to ship one ten one. Um, we can talk about it later. I will just I will just point this one in the topics because this is the last one. Um, then fixing Azure Web CS project. What is that? What is that? Is it is when I want to see the scroll bar. So this one is about. Yep, there was duplicated semicolon and maybe something else also. And by the way, topics PDB files in artifacts. Okay. Remove the necessary YAML service. So this is Sipke still on dev, waiting for one ten x also. Um, I think, or is the feature only in one in dev? We'll see. Uh, so this is removing an unnecessary abstraction for YAML service. You can use the YAML parser directly. Um, using you get signing workflow activity fails. This we talked about during triage. This is about um, marking the the user entry in the database as logged in to update the last logged in and last logged out values in the database that are checked with cookies to ensure that the cookie you get is still valid. So if the user signed off, the cookie you have is invalidated. Um, Revert unnecessary YAML service, whatever. Removed unnecessary YAML service. That's a lot of things. Oh, this is on one ten x or so, so that's good. So this is a clone of the um, dev work. Media gallery not working with Azure Blob Storage. Um, yeah, fixes from Benedek and Hanan. Um, so this is a breaking change, but we should not break anyone because um, nobody should have a re we wrote the um, iMedia service. Uh, the idea is to expose combine in the media service also, uh, so that we can override how it's done and well, so that we can detect what's the separator and create URLs correctly. Um, fixing the pager in recycle bin because this method doesn't work. On an hibernate, uh, Jasmine fixed it. Um, everything here is on one ten x. Media library fixing at the only first level of the shell folder. Blah. Okay, apparently another bug from JavaScript in um, media library, and this one. Yeah, this is the change that Hanan said that is uh, is not this working, one. but. When we fix that media library, should always uh, use the uh, forward slash separator, then this change can be reverted. Actually, we, we may we, we should probably revert this change right now and deal with the fact that there's another issue 
which is a smaller one, and then and then fix media library to use uh, the forward slash separator in in any case. Okay, please uh, tag the bug on one ten one then, okay. and do it. What are you doing at this meeting? Fix it. Okay. Add default value for radio buttons elements. Um, this was the pull request. The zip approved. Approved the change. Um, this is to be able to define a radio button as checked in dynamic forms. Uh, text placeholder for text box. Text placeholder. Text placeholder for text box. This is in text field. Because there is a property apparently it was not taken into account. Apparently. Oh for the links. Not the text field for the for the links. The text box the link um, the URL in the text box in the link. The URL text box in the link. Oh the text text box in the link, okay. Yep. Dev branch uh, return URL handling in menu item dot edit. So there was a property return URL. Now it's taken into account. Well, it's actually forwarded to the next form. Fine tuning of the admin content type field and part list. Thanks, Jasmine, for fixing the 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 fix about how it looks like in. Um, in the content definition, the alternate rows, um, and actually someone opened the bug this morning or yesterday about the same thing that seemed ugly in 110, so yeah, it has been fixed. Um, updating assembly info files, um, so apparently we were missing some of the correct versions in the assembly info. They were just updated in the module uh, .txt. Um, fine tuning again, more fine tuning. Apparently, it's just the the um, some space on the right for the links. Otherwise, they will. We talked about it last week. They will get the border. It was ugly. So this is fixing a fix. Chantier fixed it. Um, this is dev branch. What's there? This is a merge. This is 110x fixing jQuery typo. So yeah, the require of the resource is a lowercase j everywhere. So now it's fixed. Uh, look, this is the discussion we'll have later. It's on the dev branch. Um, it's on the dev branch. Fix null. E tag correct so if you serialize an output cache item and the e tag was null there will be an exception so now we check for the nullability of the e tag uh, fixing multi submission differently yeah like five times um, we fix this one so this is about this is about uh, finding the correct way to prevent multiple submissions of the same form like in case you double click or you hit enter and you click things like that so now it's, it works correctly not with this commit but one after so this uh, code doesn't work buttons prop disable true so we can't disable the button to prevent uh, double click or we are printing double click but we can't also disable the button because if we disable the button then the value the special attribute which is in the in the button itself to define which kind of button was submitting the form is not sent to the to the server so we can't do this code and uh, gentil fix that later on um, so George is working on the feature deployment branch I think we ship code so so it's a work in progress and once it's done it will go into dev um, media library more strict file and folder name validation from Lombic probably Benedek who's working on that uh, that's a pull request I think it's marked as uh, needs testing only so someone needs to validate it works not just Benedek yeah I think um, Hanan 
Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, fix duplicate export of layer data from Daniel. Apparently found an issue which he fixed. This is fixing the double submission from Jean Thierry. You see, we can't disable things, doesn't work. And this one, which is myself, I forgot to remove that. I must have tested some things and forgot to prevent everything. Uh, export the correct part property. Yes, uh, Keegan found that we were exporting this thing twice and not the correct property. In I checked and in the import it's correctly imported from this property. And then this morning um, some user reported that the Persian date was wrong. You can see obviously that it's wrong. Okay? That's obvious. In Persian. Good. So now the next uh, so we're waiting for one bug. Uh, this one to be fixed. Um, apparently, get two log errors every minute in the test one ten x. It's I think when you enable uh, the jobs uh, module, jobs queue module, and either because an issue in jobs queue or some change that has been done in the distributed log services to fix some issue. Maybe it also created another issue. Um, and 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 I think Daniel can also report. Not maybe not not this bug. Yeah, we need to check. Um, so this is the, apparently it has nothing to do with another bug which was mentioned um, because the other bug was fixed in Dev only the PostgreSQL bug. Um, so if someone can repro the issue and find a fix, feel free to do so. Uh, this is the only one we are waiting for, 1101, plus what Benedek will work on for the media library. Um, but otherwise, it looks good. Um, if we look here, 59 closed uh, on 1101. Maybe some others I missed from 110x that will be tagged 1101 also. Uh, and we should be ready to go. Did I miss anything in the conversation? Questions on the status? No, it was just me saying I was leaving. It was probably my last uh, orchard meeting for a <laughs> No way. Uh, you will have lots so uh, yeah, we have lots of time now. Good. Why do you you are joining next week? That's fine. You can join us. <laughs> Still be on guitar. You still have some work to do on the theme. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, good questions. So one the ten blocked and one bug. Um, topics demos at the end because I don't know for that. Um, PDB files in artifacts is Zoltan here? No. He's not here. He wanted it back. Bertrand also. I remember we talked about it. So the issue is that last week I showed a commit and nobody complained. And I, I said, any question about it? No. Okay. And then everyone complained after the meeting. So everyone. Well, I had two comments. Um, the change was, if I can find it, Um, I can't find it. Ah, this one. So this one was already done one month ago. Interesting one is that this one apparently was adding the PDB files. Here, no, here they're removed. Hmm. 
no, they removed from exclude, so they are integrated again. Okay, so they used to be in apparently the MS deploy package, the well, the the zip file that we ship with the release. Then, at some point, I removed them apparently for one that then they were removed for some reason there is no commit message here uh, related to a bug issue an issue number no so i removed them for some reason yes because we, yeah it was for the size of the package yes it was huge i don't know why but it was huge with that um oh because this was a yeah so so they were not in the package before because otherwise the packages before will also be huge and then uh, I think Christian opened a bug saying that apparently even the Visual Studio was deploying PDB files and complaining it was too slow because of that um, which we opened and I fixed it by removing the PDB files from from the MS deploy files but differently because it was already done here but I did that differently from the MS deploy file, so the, the one that we ship, and also from the web project file to prevent Visual Studio from deploying them. Okay. Um, but, 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 some people want the PDB files. So, what do you guys think? Well, I these files are simply used for debugging. So why nope. in the world would you have them for uh, nope. production? Nope. They are not just used for debugging. Or or they can be used even in release mode. The idea is that when there is an exception and you log something because of the PDB file, it will, even on release, even on release mode, release build, it will tell you which method fail and what line number. So there will be a mapping between every bytecode that's, that's running and from which location in the file it's coming from, even if it's uh, an optimized bytecode in release mode. So you can't debug, but you can still display the source location of the bytecode that was execu executed. So when there is an exception, then you know from where it's coming from. And I remember we already talked about it a few years ago, and and it was very useful actually, because when there is an issue, we know where it's coming from. We don't see like oh, no ref exception, thank you, but where? And then seeing the which line will help us find the actual issue. Make sense? Does that actually affect performance though? That nope. Additional? Nope. It affects the deployment time because more things to upload on the server, uh, but not the performance at all. So I assume we could uh, add them back. Um, could be an option or so. Um, I think we should exclude them from the release packages, but it would be nice to have them for deployment. What do you think? Yeah, but that's a weird statement. It's nice for from Visual Studio, but it's not good from deployment packages. Could you have two release packages? One with like PDB source. And <laughs> yeah, people will be lost, and they will. Be, Why should I use that and not this one? Yeah. So yeah, I don't mind either choice for the release package because who is using the release package? People who don't care about the source code, they just want to deploy your code and play with it. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, but at the same time, well, we could include them because then when these people find issues, we can help them and say, okay, we, we think the issue is there. So it's just a bigger package. Actually, is it a bigger package? Yeah, it's bigger. We have to, to yeah, we need to see how much bigger it is. And from Visual Studio, uh, I, there is no, we can't define the option. 
we could define the option if we just rely on whatever each project's configuration is. So we might just want to not exclude anything, but let the users define what they want to do by just right-clicking on the project, uh, uh, not this one, but if you look at Orchard 1, uh, you right-click on the CS proj file, you can define if you want to render the PDB files or not uh, by default, even in release mode, and then you will just copy it if it's there. So maybe that's what we should do. Depend on the defaults from the uh, from the Visual Studio from the CS Proj files, and we will generate them by default like we do today. So so check file size. Um, and use VS projects defaults. Defaults meaning uh, the ones in the project because anyone can change them, but our default is to have PDB files, which is current state. Okay, and uh, I will. Uh, comment on the issue that we just to say it's a feature we yep and if you want not to include pdb files then you can change the projects i i wonder if that can be a global visual solution um, global parameter Okay, good. We okay, use, uh, so property to Orchard approach, right? So you can define it for yourself in your build process. Uh, yeah, we could. Yeah. Uh, Orchard approach. Parameter in Orchard approach. So if we do, yeah, pre-compiled, we can also say with or without PDBs. Okay, also ensure it works in Kudu. So when it's built on the Kudu server, meaning Azure App Services, Git integration, then we don't generate and copy the PDB files if it's not necessary, using the same parameter. Um, this one will postpone because Sipke is not here and he made the feature. Nope. This one is about, if you want to think about it for next week, this one. Uh, in addition to having a break and heading one to six content elements, I would like to add a block quote element, which will map the block quote HTML element. Okay, so in the um, layout module, having one more uh, element to represent block quotes. Um, and then I knew it, Bertrand will jump on the issue saying, nope, don't do that. <laughs> because if you do that, then we add all the HTML elements to the to the module, right? Um, this one is an HTML element that is in structure, is a container, and it's something. Mm -hmm. An alternative design that would kill more than one bird with a stone would be to make it easy to configure the outer tag on all elements, like we do for CSS classes. Um, on all elements, on all elements, or having a generic HTML element where you can define what's the tag for the for this element. Because being able to change the out, yeah, that's always an issue. Like you have a, a a row in your layout, but you can change the outer tag of the row. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, where do we draw the line? Are we going to add? elements for all HTML tags, so I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, 
um, we you see site block quote whatever there might be many 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 and they don't they, there is no value in the editor itself it's just drag and dropping a tag so why not just even having a, a, a generic element with a drop down with all the tags you could imagine because you don't want to type the tag or you don't know the tag but in the end it's exactly what you're doing just typing a tag um, yeah so yeah if you have ideas about that uh, comments do you really want to see all the HTML tags in the layout editor so you can drag and drop them even like for instance what we have today h1 to h6 does it make sense to drag and drop h1 drag and drop h2 and so on or should that be a, a title one and you can select h1 to h6 in the drop down and same thing for a generic tag which is our generic HTML tag and you select which um, tag you want to render even if it's a container like a container tag where you will be able to change the, the um, outer tag The outer tag is a good idea. I think that's something that we also did for somewhere else, for zones maybe. Oh, there is a zone element. No, what I mean is that um, I think it, it, it may be in order to only that you can define if a zone should be tagless, and you can define a custom tag. Yeah, but I think already yeah, also two, maybe also the one, but in terms of shapes. So when you add a zone, you can define the tag. But here is different; it's a layout. Yeah, I know. So you drag and drop something. So. Yeah, but but it's the same principle. I think the outer tag is is a good idea. Okay, Bertrand, generic container element that allows customized tag. Bertrand agrees. Um okay, so people seem to agree with a generic i I say seem because only one said something plus Sergio generic um container tag, okay, it's not about replacing the the end tag is a container tag, so you can even drag and drop stuff inside a uh, generic container tag where you would select the name of the tag. Um, should it be free a text box where you type what you want, a drop down, both like a drop down, and if you don't find it, you can type a text box. I kind of like that idea, but um, I'm also in for customizing. But there should be all, maybe a list of uh, acceptable tags so that you can facilitate some testing. Testing. Yes, we do do testing on this code. I don't understand. So you suggest we have a drop down list? Possibly a drop down list, yes. With available tags? Yeah. Um, this is what I was suggesting. Rather than, ha rather than having, say, the H1 through H6 one, you know, have a, a drop down list of, uh, of commonly used tags. Commonly used. Oh, this is, this is a different. This is a different issue then. Here we are just talking about should we have more items in the in the list of elements on the layout page or should we have a generic one where you select the the, the tag, the outer tag. So yeah, if you are talking about more like frequently used ones, it's different feature. Yeah, but you could have uh, I Actually, I think it may be a good idea. So, if we had a generic uh, container tag, but you also have a drop down list besides a text box to define a custom one. So, if you also had a drop down list with, with common tags, you could 
uh, reduce the number of, of uh, elements on the on the right side by adding those uh, tags to this to this drop down list. So we could move all the h one two three four four five six uh, tags to uh, to this drop down list. Uh, when you say this drop down list, you mean so there are two two things. It's either in the element editor or on the layout editor. So either I drag and drop the generic element, and when I edit the property, there is a drop down, drop, drop down with the list of tags. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, that's okay. From the menu, that's what I'm writing. Okay, a generic tag, a container tag, where you will select the name of the tag from the from its editor. Okay, to be explicit. I can drop something which is called generic tag or container, and then when when it goes in edition, you can select which tag is used. Maybe a div by default, I don't know, uh, and then you select block quote or uh, table, whatever you want. Um, drop down list with available tags uh, and text box to enter custom one. Okay. If you don't like the ones in the drop down list, then you do that. Um, yeah. Because at the same time, if you really want a H1 tag, you can always just create a, a, a snippet and very simple, um, in a very simple way to add very, very specific ones. You don't even have to create a module. You just add a snippet, and with the enhancements that we have in One Ten X, it's even easier. Um, okay, we'll see what he comments, what he says. Um, topic. Um, this one, this one uh, said that Bertrand doesn't talk. We'll see. Um, what I found is that if I go to the organization. Because I added Benedek in the list of um, owners here, and I can see teams. Can I see users? Where can I see users? People here. And look at that. All these warnings. Okay, so I think we should. Um, we should make mandatory to have two-factor authentication uh, because if your password gets compromised then anyone can break Orchard uh, repo or add any code whatever so it's very simple to add two-factor authentication meaning well when you authenticate with an, a new device you get a, a text and you have to reply to that or an email whatever um, what do you think? Is that a big issue to have two-factor authentication? I don't always approve two-factor authentication. I think it should be on anything that's important. So I was also looking at the list, uh, and I also noticed all the uh, exclamation marks, and I also had <laughs> the same thought. So yeah, I think I think that's, that's a good idea to have it. Okay, so that doesn't bother anyone in the list to have to uh, have to factor authentication. And by the way, once you're authenticated, you see in my browser, I'm, I'm never warned again about that. And even in Git extension, it's just it's a one-time process then, so it should be very easy. I can't think of a bad. I, I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't want it. Okay. So the. Um, what I suggest is that um, I will give some time for people to enable to factor authentication with a reminder every day <laughs> once the last week uh, happened and after that uh, disable the, the account on the on the repository that's how we should do um, fine so um, time frame to move to to FA then reminders at the end of the time frame then um, revoke access okay. until 2FA 
usury is enabled. And you will find out that you see Microsoft, 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 it's mandatory if you want to use GitHub to be on two factor OAuth. Otherwise, you can't access GitHub. Um, the same way with our company. And like, you can't touch anything without two factor <laughs> authentication. Okay, good. Um, good, good, good. So we'll do that. And for those who are in the, in the meeting, you can already do that if you want. Um, I th can I send an email to, I don't know if I can, send notifications to all the members? No, I don't see that. Um, so Bertrand, what you missed is that, is that, um, we talked about the multiple tags, all the tags on the layout uh, module. And the suggestion is that we create a generic element. Here yeah, we commented a generic element, uh, a generic container tag, where you will select the name of the tag from its editor, a drop down list with the available tags, and a text box to enter a custom one. This way we can prevent. Um, from getting tags for everything. There is a generic one with a list of available tags. And if you want a custom one, you can always create a snippet for that. Hello? Hello! Yeah. Now we can hear you. Um, where is this one? So Benedek, Benedek here is Warning, F5, no more warning. Good job. Um, okay, so I will do that. Uh, HTML elements, we already talked about it. Uh, this is, is this a blocking issue? Yes, this is a blocking issue, so you can talk about it if you want. Demos, uh, an automic I'm missing. Anyone has something to talk about? Why have a drop down? Um, if you want to change the tag of existing elements, they might not be, well, first they might not have a, a, uh, an outer element, they might just be text, uh, then you might, yep. Uh, I agree, but you might actually want to add one. Okay, fine. Um, then you might rewrite something which is supposed to be, for instance, a div, and you can break stuff. Yeah, well, you, you see that. And that will, will not be a real experience to say I'm drag and dropping a h1 and I'll change it to a div. It's like, it's still a h1 on the layout. I agree that on the head. Yes. So maybe there are cases. Well, we, we don't. Uh, well, we hear half of what you say. What about the, the class? What about the CSS class? It's just so where is that going if you don't have an outer tag, for example? And we put that everywhere. So how does that work? Okay, so it just invalidates my first argument. So, but still. Uh, yeah, it doesn't. Look like this is fully thought through. And maybe some elements are multiple tags. But at the, at the same time, yeah, where does the CSS class go then? Go then, yeah. Because a snippet can be more than just one tag. Yeah, so for me, the tag is the, the exact analog of that CSS class that we have everywhere. So the <laughs> so it should be the same. But then, let's say, we want a block quote, and we have this option to change the tag of any anything. What do we drag and drop? I drag, I drag and drop a an h1, and I change it to block quote. Okay, so I agree that it fails on on, on some elements, but uh, so I. But uh, you're right about the the header ones. Yeah, well, um, so what about the suggestion we did? We do like a new a new element, like generic element. 
called generic or generic tag. You drag and drop it, it's generic in the UI. And when you edit it, you just define what is the tag of the of this. Well, you wouldn't need it. Yeah, but yeah, but, but that's more obvious than drag and dropping anything and changing the outer tag. You are assuming that what the user is trying to do is to add an element around something else, whereas uh, he might just be trying to change the the tag that is already output by uh, by that element. Okay, so how do we add a block quote? What's the solution to add a block quote? Uh, you create a text element and uh, you change its tag to block quote. Okay. And if I want to add a site element? The site element? What's that? C-I-T-E. Or whatever. Yes, because same thing. Okay, same thing. That's exactly that, what that, I wanted you to say. That was so actually my argument. It's that we are not going to introduce a new element for okay. every single tag that we have yep. in HTML. So instead of creating a new one, which would be generic, why not just use the... Well, in this case, in this case, the text one is nice because, oh, let's change the text element to give you the option to change the, ta the outer tag. Mm -hmm. So it, should, it will just be about changing the text element itself. And yeah, uh, that's a middle ground that I would be happy with. And then, but the, the issue with the text element is that you can just enter some text. Now, let's say I want to add a container tag and to be able to add something inside. So that will still be interesting to have another one where I can define the tag like in the text, but put anything inside. Yeah, so uh, I would say that w we can go two ways. We can add it everywhere and add exceptions, or we can uh, add it as exceptions. I mean, we can be additive or subtractive here. Yeah, I, I'm afraid that adding it everywhere will cause lots of tro uh, trouble and incompatibilities. We edit CSS class everywhere, so maybe we also need a way to exclude CSS class from some elements. Can you comment on, on this with your suggestion? Okay. Thank you. Um, you mentioned the CSS class issue, that if we can add CSS everywhere, then why can't we add a tag everywhere? <laughs> if we can have an HTML ID everywhere, why can't we have an HTML tag everywhere? And then exactly a block quote is just a text with a, a custom tag. Um, okay. So demos, Orchard 2, news. For those who are on Gitter, you, you've seen the progress. Um, so I have the status here. So the status is that uh, where is it? Okay, here. So during the last weeks, there's a guy named Alexander Bosharov. Um, look at all these commits. You see? It's crazy. Like 50 commits, something like that, for the last month. Uh, and this is just part of what he did because he also did the same thing on YesSQL. So he first migrated YesSQL um, on uh, .NET RC2 and it works fine and then he started to migrate Orchard 2 to the .NET RC2 and .NET RC2 from RC1 to RC2 there are lots of changes in terms of um, API and how it works how it, how it behaves and also changes in the way that DNX is replaced by .NET CLI uh, which also changes many things so he did all these changes it's crazy and um, so two weeks ago he, he, he pushed everything and it was building so it was building but it was not working so then I um, took the relay and tried to make it work with RC2 and fixing step by step 
uh, dependency injection, stuff that was not supposed to work this way, well, many, many, many things. And uh, yesterday night, I was able to have something working, so I could pass the setup uh, and hit the home page and then render the theme and everything. So now it's working almost perfectly. There are still some bugs, but uh, uh, it, it's good. And you can all do that. So just to be able to do that, if you go on Orchard 2, uh, there is the explanation on how to do this um, in the readme we updated it so if you just clone master branch you delete this folder you delete the build folder you delete this one but you should not have these two uh, you run build.cmd or build.ps1 if you're on PowerShell and then you go in this folder and you type .net run and it will work. You will. It's actually 5,000. You will be able to hit the, the setup and run the setup, and then it will work. Um, that's good. And this is the result. So this is what it looks like when you have passed the setup. Not exactly that, because there, by default, when you run the setup right now, there is no theme which has been configured. So it will be the safe mode theme, the ugly one. And then, so this is a home index, which is a from a demo module let me show you so this is the same state as three months ago but now on rc2 so if we go there you see there is a demo module uh, which has a custom route like in orchard one which maps home index to the home controller and index uh, action this is the one we see here this one is just rendering a form and three tag helpers using um, orc or zone tag helpers in a zone to just to play with that and this form when you type some text uh, will create a content item and redirect to the display of this content item again from the same um, module, the demo module, okay, again playing with zones. So this is just a demo module with controllers and views and using APIs like the um, content manager APIs, so it's very simple. Um, and there are also the, the, the modules we know from Orchard 1, well some of them because for, we don't have everything. Um, so modules, contents, content types, and list and resources, themes. So themes is to be able to manage themes. So this one, for instance, is the same route as in Orchard One. The name of the module, the controller, and the view. Okay, this is the default route. So on this one, this is an admin controller. So it uses the admin theme. The admin theme here you can configure is the admin, which is different from Orchard 1. Now there is a setting to configure the, the theme from the admin. Uh, and the site theme is this one. So if I remove this one, there will be no theme for the front end. So if I go back to home index, it's fall backing to or falling back, whatever, to safe mode. Okay, and you see there is no more um, theme from the front end. So if I go back there, I will use this one for the front end and it's magical home index this is using the the, the theme I'm selecting okay so this is a, a, a standard admin controller which is using by default the uh, the admin theme so if I go to this module and I look at the controller it got it gets an admin controller like in Orchard 1 but there is no convention based on the name right now in Orchard 2 so you still have to put the admin attribute to say it's an admin controller so it will be protected for admin only and it will be themed as an admin all the views here will be themed as an admin okay and standard thing you see get, getting the some services so this is on the post setting the value and redirecting very simple um, just to show how it works and there is a i site theme service like in orchard one and i admin theme service which is new just to configure the the the, the property of the, the admin theme. Okay, so very simple. Um, so this is this one. There is a content types too. Um, so, so the first thing you you have never seen uh, so far. This one you have seen. This is an idea on how to organize the the, the navigation in uh, Orchard Two. Um, the idea is to be able to, to do something like uh, the content tree, which is a module that Bertrand did, uh, which lets you 
navigate more things and um, and also which is configurable. And in the end, we already had that in Orchard. It's just that we could not represent the, the all these links uh, correctly in Orchard 1. There is no way in the UI to do that. So that's why Bertrand created a, a popover uh, dialog showing all the links and the sub-navigation and everything. So what I'm suggesting here is to actually have the, the zone for multiple like um, how do you say that uh, like a tree view navigation inside the theme so it's a first class citizen to have a um, a tree navigation in the in the theme so this is an example how it would look like so just pure static uh, links but when you click on the major node here which would be content media uh, settings i don't know things like that but not that much okay not that many just a, a few number of items which again are completely customizable and you can add a new one from any module but define a few set of them and then when we click then we have all the modules which can render ways to navigate inside the, this level and with multiple levels uh, so for instance this one will be content content items okay and content items will is the same as today but you can click and you will see everything from the um, it won't work i think will it work yeah it works okay so you can see here content items shows us today but under you could have taxonomies you could have pages or any thing you want from the from the content menu so any module can add now items here or sub items to content items to filter specific things so typically the taxonomies. So we could have the taxonomy module itself, which will render a taxonomy easier and under all the taxonomies. And when I click, I will see either the, 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 all the content items filtered by the taxonomy or the taxonomy terms themselves. It depends on what we want to do. So the idea is to have this, a tree of, uh, of items that anyone can, can edit. And this can be server side rendered or client side rendered because you have full, um, you can render, for instance, just an item with a specific class so that your custom script will render all the sub-items dynamically um, from Ajax calls. It's up to you, up to each module to define this behavior. Okay. Can a module add some new nodes under uh, a node that another module created? Yes, it's like, it's just a high navigation provider, so you can, yeah, you can do it at any level, inject at any level at any level, like today. It's just that it was not exposed and correctly exposed in the UI. Uh, and you couldn't go arbitrary deep? Um, you can only go to what you know exists um, or create, so exam example. So it seems closer to the, the tree module that I built than to the current uh, iNavigation provider. Yes, that's the goal. Yeah, I understand. But it's, it's closer, but at the same time, it's just... Technically, there is nothing which has changed. It's just in terms of UI. That because when you say you can add at any level, um, you, can, you can already add at, at any level. No, uh, so what I mean is that... Um, so in, in my module, um, there was the notion of a node uh, type, I, I, I believe, uh, and the the iNavigation provider you, um, API is a little clunky, um, so maybe we, we'd want to clean that as well to make it a little easier to use. I, I mean, when you look at a, a menu navigation provider uh, implementation... In version one? In version one, yeah. yeah. It, oh, it's, it's much simpler now. Okay. Okay. It, it's it's really? way so first we only have one you remember we had two or three different things yeah I, and there there are so many parameters in there some of which are lambdas and bleh. oh there are still some things like this and I tried to remove but there there were reasons not to remove them I, I, it, it took me many many days uh, um, so let me show you how it works for this one for instance for the content items um, so this is admin menu okay. And in menu, the first, the first difference is that there is no more a property bound to your class. It's when you build a navigation, 
when you are called to build navigation, you are called with the name of the menu. And then you decide if you want to take part for this one or not. Okay? So you can say, it's I mean, okay, or you could you could be adding that anywhere in any module, in all the menu, for instance, now. Something you could not do before. Now you can do on any menu from the front end, from the back end, from anywhere, you can add something. Um, and then, so it's kind of, uh, there are some new things, but uh, let, let me show you. So this one, for instance, will also list all the content types, and you see, so the content types now will be added in this navigation under content items. You can add all the content types. I don't know why it's not working there, but uh, that's why it, it was working before. Um, so adding the T content position 1.4, which means um, content is this one actually. Content is the main one. And then under that we had content items, position one. So like before, okay, with the controller action. And local nav, local nav, what does it mean? Uh, local nav, because, 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 crap, I don't remember. I tried to remove it also. <laughs> crap, oh, it was thrown, so I will find it, find it again. Um, I forgot to put the comment on this one. Something which I think is new also is add class content so that you can trigger for this content item custom uh, JavaScript for that. I want to add also add resources. Something I, I'm not sure we have that already. Uh, so that you can define also uh, you want to add CSS or JavaScript that you want to include with the menu item uh, so that it will trigger some behavior on that. Um, yeah, well Main idea here is that this one is much simpler. There is one interface, which is iNavigation Provider, and you get called for any menu, and you say, oh no, I have nothing to do with this menu, or you want to add something in the menu. Mm. And the sample one, so lists also has that, I think. Nope. So content types, admin menu, Content definition. That's where that I don't see that. So same thing. This one. Oh, oh, maybe this is okay. Yes, this is this one. This one is oh, uh, content items. This one oh, is to create it's an appeared. It briefly appeared and then it then it disappeared. What? You had you had something under content items. As if, as if it was folded by some JavaScript or something. Oh, I see items. I can see it. Yeah, there is some JavaScript. Yeah, you think so? There is something under. No, there is nothing. Mm. Oh, maybe this one actually. Well, this one is to create a new content item based on the content type. It's just a um, proof of concept, you see. So when I click on article, it falls, but it should st it should still be there with the active attribute. Um, I don't remember this one. This one is for content definition, uh, content types, and content parts. Uh, this one is the demo one. This one is an example that could be media, themes, whatever. I don't know. It's just an idea of the navigation, how it could look like, just to have a main menu with big boxes here and then full navigation there. So settings will just be one entry and then we will have many sub items there. Yep, that's it. And you can create an article and it should work, title and it so content types you can already edit the content type, add fields and so on. Um, Everything like like an actual one. Uh, if I create an article, uh, publish. There is an issue now with the breaking changes. So now I have uh, item one hundred and thirty-three, which means I there is a display. I can't remember. I mean, um, let me check quickly. Controller, item controller display content item displays watch it content display you see it works title blah this is a default rendering so it works and and there is also the API one 
by default which is get on the API controller so that should be something like API slash contents I don't know, there's something like this. I showed it uh, a few months ago. I should watch the videos back. But there is an API controller for that. Yep. So that's it. So now we have it working. I will focus on having new, uh, updating the features, seeing what's missing, all the basic um, infrastructure services like authentication, uh, user management, things that will let us build modules. Uh, we have also the list modules which is working. I just need to remember how it works. Um, but I could build a blog with that. Uh, um, so it's there. It's, so well, we are back in business on RC2. That's the, the good news. And we can again progress on Orchard 2. That's it. Questions? Okay, good then. Um, so, release soon. Again, just one and a half bug uh, blocking. And then we can ship one and one and also focus on Orchard 2 again. Thanks everyone. Uh, see you on Thursday. Bye guys. Bye.